praised by a tree, pinned to a cross. Jesus was not a passive Savior. He was a passionate Savior. And when he came on this planet, he recognized everything belonged to him. You have to recognize who you are by the power and the presence of God. Don't be passive. Don't leave the work to others. Recognize the authority in which you have. In the book of Mark chapter 11, I want you to see this scripture, Mark chapter 11, verse 2. It says, and he said to them, go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. It's a virgin colt. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord, which in the original dialect actually said, Yahweh, the Messiah, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way. And they found the colt tied on the door outside the street. And they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosening the colt? And they spoke to them saying, As Jesus had commanded. Meaning they actually said, Yahweh, the Messiah, has need of it. So they let them go. Notice the respect of the people. These were strangers, the disciples. The people may or may not have known them. And they were wondering, why are you loosening a cult? Why are you taking that cult? It's a virgin cult. It's a young cult. It's a cult that nobody's ever sat on. That means it's a cult that's not tamed. It's a cult that's not trained. Nobody has sat on this cult. We see the dramas and the plays and we see a donkey. It wasn't a donkey. It was a young horse, a colt. And they let him go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road. And others cut down leafy branches from trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They're making declarations. It's very important to understand. The word Lord here was not just Lord. The word Lord here was the declaration of the Messiah in which they were waiting for. They were waiting for the Messiah. And when they heard the Messiah was first when the cult was being loosened, and then second when they walked in there, and they began to make a declaration. The Messiah is here. The Messiah is here. Oh, for generations, millennials, millennials past, it had been prophesied. Thousands of years past, it had been prophesied that the Messiah was coming. And the Israelites were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And now the Messiah made the statement, I am he. And the proof of it is he grabs he grabs an untrained colt that had never been ridden. I don't know if you know anything about horses, but you don't get on a horse that's never been ridden and think you're going to stay on that horse. But you got to understand, he knew who he was, and the colt knew who Jesus was. I'm not going to throw him off. This is my Savior. The Bible says if we don't cry out, the rocks will cry out that he is Lord. If we don't worship, even the trees will cry out and worship him. Because all of creation that God has created is living. Just because you don't speak their language, don't think they don't speak. Mm. So they throw blankets, they throw their clothes on the colt, and Jesus gets on the colt with no problem. And when he comes down there, the word went out and the revelation of the power of God hit the streets where they all began to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, this is our Messiah. This is our Messiah. They took these, it says, it doesn't say, in some areas it says palms, in this scripture it says loose items. Sophia, 
Bring me those branches right there. They took these items, palms, and they laid them down. Thank you, sweetie pie. That's her name to me. Nobody else is allowed to call her that. It's my granddaughter, by the way. <laughs> She's a future preacher of the gospel and worship leader, going to learn guitar and, and keyboards. And They took these palms and they laid it down. These trees were used to worship their Messiah. These trees were used to worship the Messiah. And they took the palms and they would lay the palms down. They took of their clothes and they laid them down. Because this is the Messiah. If Jesus shows up right here, what are you willing to lay down? Why is it that we hang on to so many things, so many crutches and so many problems that we have, we hang on to them when Jesus is really with us right now? We're waiting for a physical manifestation when God is saying, hey, you better concentrate on the spiritual manifestation. They took little branches and little twigs and they laid them all down. Least he touched just the plain dirt, let him come in contact with his own creation. A representation of life. And it says, blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord, the, the Messiah. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went to Jerusalem, into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things at that hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. The whole day, this was a whole day celebration. I added, Sister Juanita, I, I added a scripture, Psalms chapter 1. If you can go there, verse 1, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 3. I apologize for not giving this to you earlier. But the Lord told me to share this with you. Remember the title of the message, Praised by a Tree. Praised by a Tree. These trees and these branches that were laid down were worshiping, they were bowing down and worshiping the Messiah. In Psalm chapter 1 it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law or in the word of the Lord. And in his word he meditates, he conjures it up, he continues to think about it day and night. He shall be, this person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Worship by a tree. Praise by a tree. Recognize how God sees you. God sees you as that tree that was laid down before the feet of Jesus. God recognizes you for who you are. When we lift our hands up in worship, can you all bear with me on this? Watch this. Lift one hand up. Lift one hand up if you could. Hold your fingers out. Wave it at me. When you lift your hands up in worship. Now, what is in the center part of your hand? What is that called? The center part of your hand. What? 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 And what did they put down? Oh, come on. They were praising, they were waving this right here on Palm Sunday is for us to remember, let us lift up our palms in praise and thanksgiving before the Lord. We need to worship him. There were battles that were won when the people just praised and worshiped and they gave what was called in Leviticus, it talks about a wave offering. That this even, when you, when you wave, you wave as an offering before God. And the priest would take the tithes and the offerings, they would take the gifts of the people and would wave it before God and they'd worship God with a wave offering. So when Jesus was walking in on the back of the colt, riding in, on the back of the cult, they recognized Hosanna in the highest. Let us worship him. Let us worship him in singing and in palms. That's right, sister. Let us worship him with singing and in palms. 
The saddest thing that I saw when the winter storm blew through here is our palm trees die. Because it ministers to me. For years this message has ministered to me. And when I see the palms, I never forget, this is my palm. And I see the palms and I see the big trees up there, the big palm leaves waving. And, but, their, but their life expectancies are coming close. And when I see these things, I recognize when he walked in, he walked in riding on the colt, stepping on the palms. And we see Palm Sunday and we make it very traditional, religious, without even realizing what the true meaning behind Palm Sunday is. And when it says right here, it says, this is the blessed man. He's like a tree planted. In the book of Revelation chapter 5. Let's recognize who this Jesus is. In verse 11 it says, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of, the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Pause for a second there. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands is an old English statement. That it's an unnumerable amount of individuals. How many were there? Thousands upon thousands. Ten thousands upon ten thousands. For as far as the eye can see, he saw. And the number of them, he says, living creatures and elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands and thousands. Watch what they were saying. Saying with a loud voice. Watch what they were saying. In unison, what were they saying? Worthy is the Lamb. Everybody say, worthy. 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 Worthy denotes you have the potential. You have the ability. You have the qualifications. Worthy. You're worthy. You have the qualifications of something. And the question at the very beginning, at the beginning of verse 1, which we're not going to read in Revelation chapter 5, is that, they, you know, John, uh, when he was seeing this, he was sad because he didn't see a, a lamb that was slain. He didn't see uh, one that was able to open up the book and break the seals. He didn't see one. And the angel of the Lord said, there's one. He's on the throne. And then this is where they picked up at verse 11. Because now they saw the lamb, and he says, now the lamb is worthy the lamb, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive. Why was he slain? The lamb we know is Jesus. Why was he slain? He was slain for the purpose to receive these seven items. And I want you to put this down, write it down, engrave it inside your heart, these seven items. You have to have this, and you need to have it by heart. You have to memorize it for a reason, and I'm going to tell you why. This is going to show you the, the full power of Jesus. That he's powerful Jesus. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Seven items, he's worthy, qualified, capable, earned to receive. Here's the item that we need to understand. The scripture does not say anything by accident, and it doesn't say it wrong. It says it accurate, and it also says it in a timely or timeline manner. So when something is worthy, denotes that it hasn't received it yet. See, the seal wasn't broken. The book was not opened yet because they hadn't seen that there was one worthy. And John was sad because he says, I can't see that's one worthy. Then the angel of the Lord says, no, there is one that's worthy. And this is who he is. He's the lamb that was slain. And he's worthy. But yet the book had not been opened at this moment. And the seal was not released yet. So this was a, a statement of what is about to take place. But there is a way and a process and a procession that the kingdom operates. The kingdom does not operate by accident. It operates on purpose. So just because he was already slain and because he's sitting on the throne and the Bible says he looked like a lamb that was slain. He was full of blood and he was sitting there on the throne. 
in supernatural sense, it was like Jesus was just taken off the cross and put right on the throne. And he was slain. But the book hadn't been opened. But he is worthy. He's worthy to receive, denotes he hasn't received it yet, but to receive. Why is it has he not received it yet? Because there's a procession. There's one who is required to give him power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. You have to put those words inside your spirit, man. Because he's worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. But there is one that he desired to have the ability to, to give it to him. Because he's worthy, had not received it yet, to receive. He hasn't received it yet. Why? Because there's one who is ordained to give it to him. And it's going to blow your mind to see who that is. Goes on and says, And every creature which is in heaven, which remember 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands, they're saying, Worthy are you. But they didn't have the ability to give by themselves. It says, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth, and watch this, in heaven and on earth, wait, 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 Cre and every creature, the word creature means creation, created being. Everybody say, this is a created being. Come on, you got to get this in your spirit in order for you to comprehend this, because this is going to set you on fire everywhere in your life. If you catch this right, you're going to recognize the power that is available Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Creature, every creature in heaven, every created being on heaven, every created being on earth, and watch this, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, the fish, the octopus, the clam, the crab, oh, the angels, those who have died before us, that's what the Bible says, they're there, absent of the bodies, presence of the Lord. That ten thousands, one thousand, thousands of thousands, millennials past, those who have passed before are standing around the throne, and they're saying, worthy is he to receive. And he says, and then those that are on the earth, which is us, we're on the earth, right? And then it goes on and says, those that are in the water, inside the sea, under the ground, all the bugs, all the, all the, all the insects, even the cucaracha. I want you to recognize that. Every created being, those in the earth, and such as are in the sea, watch this. And all that are in them, I heard saying. Stop right there. All of creation, John hears them say something. The ones that are around the throne are saying, worthy are you to receive. But. All of creation, he heard them say, blessing and honor and glory and power. Watch, ready for, so they were saying the same thing. Everybody in unison like a choir. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessing. He's worthy to receive. But then when all creation sang in unison, there's a word that changed. You ready for this word? I want you to see this word. Blessing and honor, this is what he heard them say. Blessing and honor and glory and power. What's that next word? Everybody say it on the count of three. One, two, three. I want you all to yell it. One, two, three. B. No longer worthy. Now, here. Take it. All creation makes a declaration that takes the procession of worthiness to actuality. Who is it that's giving them all this power? Who's giving them all this power is all of creation who says, Jesus, you take blessing and power, glory, honor, wisdom, strength. Be unto you. It's yours. This is yours. Why is it that God would give us, the created, the ability to give he, the creator, 
power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Why? Because he created Adam and Eve in the garden and gave them all that. And Adam and Eve in the garden, when they disobeyed, they gave it over to the enemy. But when Jesus was slain on the cross, he provided redemption. And the redemption, you know what redemption means? Redemption means I'm going to bring you back to the state before sin. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to pay the price of the sin that had been let loose. That means we who have accepted Jesus as the slain lamb on the cross and resurrected and is alive inside our life, I stand with the authority that the Father gave Adam and Eve. That authority. Now he had to receive. Remember the kingdom, what did I say? The kingdom does everything in order. God gave authority to his creation. His creation had the ability to give the authority to the enemy. And Jesus had to come as a created being. The word of God made manifested into flesh. So that way a created being, also being God, can be crucified on the cross to pay the price that sin was created. Why? To bring us back, to redeem us back from the curse of the law. That because there was the, all the right of power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing was given to man. And God will not repent. Ooh, you guys need to get this. God will not repent even though man sinned. God was now subject to his own word. All power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing I gave to this created being who fell. So he created a way that this created being can be crucified. One, his word, Jesus, can be crucified to bring back man into the pre-fallen state or redeem man back to the way he was. But now man, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we're standing with power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. And guess what he wants us to do? Jesus, I give it to you. I give it to you, Jesus. I give you all power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessing. Why do we do that? Because it's proven we can't hold it ourselves. We need him, a paraclete, the Holy Ghost, to be with us. We have to give this over to Jesus. The Redeemer gave it and released it back to us. But now we have to give it to him that it's back on the throne. Are y'all getting any of this? Now, Matthew chapter 28, there's a reason for this. There's a marriage that's taking place. The Bible even says in the, in the latter chapter of Revelation, it says, it says, I see my church coming down to sending down a, as, a, as a bride, dressed as a bride, coming to the Lamb's Supper table. They see, remember, with this, there's a ceremonial, uh, there's a matrimony that's taking place. We are the body of Christ. He dwells with inside us as a marriage. So there has to be this courting that's taking place here. Isn't this powerful? Matthew chapter 28, watch this. Jesus said this is after the resurrection and, as, and right before the ascension, after the resurrection. Now he's on the planet. He's already been, he's already been crucified and he rose from the dead and he showed himself for 40 days. And he makes this statement to the disciples. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, watch this. You ready for this? What are those first two words right there? All authority. Is that some? Is that a few authority? Is that one or two authority? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me. Who gave him the authority? Revelation chapter 5. All creation says, let all power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing be unto you. We surrender all authority. Now he has all authority. He has all authority. And watch what he does with it. 
All authority has been given to me. Now he says, in heaven and on earth, watch this. Go therefore, because all authority has been given to me, you go. You go. You go. Because we're married. We're one. I have all the authority. Now you have all the authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. People of God, you have an authority on you because when you surrendered to Christ, you gave him all authority. We have to declare it to him. We declare right now all authority, all authority. We give you all power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Father, I give it to my Savior, my Master, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. So then when you try to take that power back, when you don't in inquire of the Word, when you don't inquire of the Word, when you don't inquire of Christ, and you're taking back that power, Where's the authority now? You've just stolen from Christ. When we don't pay our tithes, we're stealing. When we don't give a gift of offering, we're stealing. That's what he tells us. If we don't worship him, we're stealing. We're taking back something that belongs to him, doesn't belong to you. When you ask Christ to come inside your life, you gave it to him. And guess what? That's righteous deed because now he's going to walk with you. And he's going to make sure that you're taken care of. And he says, now you go. Because you have authority. You have authority. My wife, we've been married 34 years. When she goes to places, she already knows that there's things that she can do because of our relationship. There's places she can go because of our relationship. She comes and inquires of me, honey, what do you think about? And we talk about it and then go, get it done, yeah. And she knows that now she's not going on her own. She's got everything about me going with her. Everything that she needs is going to go with her. And the more time we spent together, the more we got to know each other, that now we can talk to each other just by a look and a glance. And that's the way the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants us to be. That we walk together with him, that we have the power and the authority as the bride of Christ, that we can go wherever we need to go, and he's going with us. And therefore, since he's with us, how much power do I have? Oh, my brother. How much wisdom do I have? Oh. How much riches do I have? Oh. Are you seeing all this? How much strength do I have? Oh. You guys need to get that in your revelation.